Okay, so this is far enough for us to start walking through this together. Again, this is the part that's the same. It's the same volume, okay? But instead of slicing perpendicular to the axis of rotation, what am, which direction am I going to go in this time? Parallel. Parallel? Okay, that means I'm going vertical, like so. And of course, with these areas, I'm still going around in the same direction. So I'm going to draw it off onto the right, just like I did before. When you do this rotation, you're going to get this guy forming a cylindrical shell, aren't you? Okay. So let's draw that. It looks like it's about that whole high. Okay. Are you starting, by the way, to get a little bit better at drawing your annular slices and your cylindrical shells? It takes a bit of getting used to, but you can see how powerful it is. So here's my shell. Uh, what do we need to put on here? Well, just like before, I need some measurements. I need some measurements to work out this thing. Let's start with the easy ones. What is the thickness of my cylindrical shell? Delta X. Delta X, because it's a width. It's literally going horizontally. What other distances do I need for this guy? Okay, so once I get the radius, that is going to tell me the circumference. That's what I need it for, right? What's the radius in this case? Ah, this is the radius here corresponds to the radius here. That's kind of nice. If you get yourself in the position where you're like, oh, I tried one, I got it wrong. The radii of these things are the same kind of thing, right? So the radius is still x. What was the other piece of information I needed? I need the, wait, hold on. I've got the radius. I need the height of this cylindrical shell, oh. right? Because you remember, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice this down the middle and then I'm going to unfold it and make oh. that rectangle. Do you remember that? So this is going to give me 2 pi r, right? Which will give me that length. And then I need this height. Okay, what's the height? The height is just, well, how far up do you go? Which is the, it's the y coordinate, is it not? The height is just y, which of course I know is just cos x, okay? And by the way, the reason I know that I don't just write h equals y, I'm gonna to go to cos x is because look, delta x, that means you're integrating with respect to x soon. This is in terms of x, I need everything in terms of x. Okay, I'm ready. The volume is equal to, I'm gonna add up all of these cylindrical shells. So the limit as what? Delta x is approaching zero. I'm summing, but this time I'm summing with respect to x, so what are my boundaries? Zero to very good, 0, pi on 2, and then what you've got in here, if you recall, this is going to be 2 pi r all the way around, and this is going to be h. So in fact, I'm even going to write that, um, 2 pi r h, that's the area of your cylindrical shell, but then of course it has a thickness, doesn't it, namely delta x. So now I'm ready. I'm going to write this out as an actual integral now, right? What constant can I take out? 2 pi. 2 pi, very good. I'm integrating from 0 to pi on 2. And what's left inside? X cos x. Yeah, there's r and h, and that's x and cos x. So I've just got this. Now, <coughs> admittedly, this is still not a, oh yes, of course, right? But we've been far enough through integration to know, all right, this might not fall out straight away. But thankfully, conveniently, this is not that hard to do with integration by parts. Can we simply, can we do this together? What are our, it's been a little while, maybe. But we're looking for a u and a dv that are going to give us a du and a v. Choices? U equals, U, U equals X. Now, why is that an obvious choice in this case? It's pretty straightforward. Okay, because it gets simpler, whereas if you put X here, it's going to get worse. Yes? So, I know this has been a while, but at least the cogs are still turning. That's going to give me 1. So that gives me cos X over here, which gives me... Cool. Excellent. Okay. So now I'm ready to evaluate this volume. The volume is going to be 2 pi outside of... Okay, I've got the uv, and remember this is a definite integral, right? So here's uv, x sine x, and where is it evaluated from? Not uh, to pi on 2, going forward, okay? Um, and then I'm taking away the integral, same boundaries of? Sine x. It's just 
It's just sine x, isn't it? Or sine x times 1. Okay? Close bracket. And even though I've still got a little bit of legwork to go, this is not bad. This is not bad. Okay, let's finish this out. So, let's evaluate at the <laughs> upper boundary. Pi on 2 times sine pi on 2. 1. Which sine pi on 2 is just 1, so that gives me pi on 2. Take away 0, zero. zero times whatever. Well, 0 times 0. Okay, so that's that dealt with. Okay, now I'm ready to do this. This is a minus sine x. So I might as well turn that into a plus cos x. Do you agree with that? From 0 to pi on 2. And now I've just got to tidy up a little bit. Okay, what do we got here? Pi on 2. Cos pi on 2 is just... Cos pi on 2 is 0. And then cos 0 is minus 1. Yeah? Have I got my sign right? Does it look good? Um, I'm just going to do one more thing. I see there's a 2 there and a dividing by 2 there. So I'm just going to chuck that inside. That leaves me with a pi on the outside, a pi there, and a minus 2, and there's my volume. Okay. Units cute. That's like the only thing I remember. <laughs> Hooray. Done. Okay. Now, let's just pause and um, see where we went, right? We looked at this volume, and because we're not that familiar with this, it's not immediately obvious, I don't think, at least not to me, which one you should choose. And they won't necessarily tell you, right? But it doesn't take us long to realise. As soon as, even as a, even as a two-unit student, as soon as you look at this and you say, oh, okay, V equals pi naught to, I've got to have Y boundaries, because I'm around the Y axis, right? Not to one of this, uh, y, sorry. Keep on doing that. You look at that and you're like, no, 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 right? So you don't have to waste much time. Where, in fact, you could probably do that. Without even drawing the diagram, you can see that's a bad way to go, right? So you head down this path. It brings in your understanding of integration by parts and out pops for number three, okay? Now, just as an end note, as a little epilogue, like I said, this thing can be integrated. I didn't integrate it, but I found out what the integral was. This is what you get. Uh, the integral of cos minus y squared will give you, okay, there's a pi out the front, and this is what you end up getting. There we go, okay. Like I said, I didn't say it was going to be fun. Now the lovely thing about it is, well firstly, you're like, oh my goodness. Okay. Where do you think this came from, by the way? Where do you think it came from? It came from by parts. The giveaway, the giveaway that it came from by parts is this guy over here. Do you see that? Oh, like, oh that must have come from the integrand, right? That's exactly what happened. Uh, like, it's, it's going to come from one of these guys, right? Um, once, you, once you evaluate it, okay? Now, I actually, you can crunch the numbers, actually. Even though it looks like an awful mess, because of things like this and things like this, the zeros and ones actually do come out in the wash. If you really want to test it out, you still get to pi times pi minus you get two. Negative okay. two for y. Uh, yeah, you get a, you get a few different things in there, yeah, but it, it works out. It works out. Okay. But clearly, shells is a superior method, and you can see that it was as soon as you start to get to this expression. You're like, no, 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 this can't be it. This can't be it. I'm going to go in another way. Okay.